Namaskaram. Hari Om to everyone. So warm welcome to those who are joining us for the first time to the a new lecture series, which we have titled it as the Eternal Wisdom Dialogues. These are a new lecture series after our very healthy discussion we have had over the profound text Bhajagovindam. We thought we should embark on a new journey which would draw out the essential principles involved contained in the Shastras but with a primary objective of giving it a, a sense of applicability, giving it a sense totally from as an applied philosophy. So these dialogues, that for those of you who are coming for the first time, it is indeed titled as a dialogue because You only learn through a conversation. You only learn something through a dialogue. And what better dialogue to have than a dialogue on the eternal principles. So these give you various tools to bring about a, a paradigm shift, to give you a new dimension to your attitude, brings a shift in your thought process and ultimately changing the course of your action, influencing your life in general. So there are various subject matters, topics that we would take up as we evolve into this Eternal Wisdom Dialogue lecture series. But to begin with, um, as you have heard, we would take up certain selected verses from, or the selected Doha, as we all have known growing from our younger childhood days, we have heard the great works of Sant Kabir, the great Sant Kabir, a poet, philosopher. It's very touching. It's very uh, philosophical. It's very practical. The beauty of it is it is down to earth. The message is very palatable. The message is very applicable. And anybody who walks into this knowledge will be able to relate to these simple yet profound truths. So as you all know, Sant Kabir was a, a great well-known poet, saint, philosopher from the 15th century. And his life and his works had a great influence in, on Hinduism, on Sikhism, even amongst those uh, Muslims. So the Islamic community also, they're very much influenced by his uh, philosophical insights. So we have got a selection of 29 Dohas, which you would all have heard love listening, love chanting. So it's something very familiar, a little different from the other texts we all have been engaged with studying. So I'm certain that this journey will establish the how relevant are these principles and how universal are these truths because at different times in history, great men spoke in a language which was needed, which was understood by the people then. 
So I, I really do not know whether it will, it's relevant today, whether the Kabir Dohas are relevant today, but it's something which I enjoyed. I see a certain eternity to it and they have never perished in my heart. So I, uh, I hope I can do justice to the, the great Sant Kabir and the, the, the philosophy which he's tried, tried to communicate and we'll try to get the best out of it, okay? So we'll write, get into the text. I will chant each Doha twice. So please chant along with me. You'll, you'll start enjoying it. Now, how many of you are hearing these Doha's for the first time? Can you raise your hands? For the first time you're hearing the Doha, who is it? Harishji, you're hearing first time? Sriniji, welcome to Hyderabad. You're hearing for the first time. But then you raise your hand. I raise my hand because some of them I heard for the first time. Uh, no, but you invariably have heard, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah. I think you're too close to your brother, so you have to be. He's influencing you, you know. Don't be so close to him. I think uh, Venkat Ramji is, I think he says he's heard for the first time in Mayama. You heard, you're hearing for the first time. It'll be a, a beautiful journey. So there is that document which has been shared in the chat box. Please do download it. So it would have the, the Sanskrit text, the transliteration and the meaning. And also you will realize that we have given a, a little title to each Doha, which is not there in the original. So it just helps us understand what is the con content and what's the message on, okay? So let's chant the first, first verse. Kabira khada bazaar me mange sab ki Na kahu se do sati, na kahu se bair kabira, na kahu se bair. Kabira khada bazaar me, mange sab ki na kahu se do Sati na kahu se bair kabira na kahu se bair. So the topic given to this verse, what is the title of the verse? Kabira in the marketplace. Kabira khada bazaar me mange sab ki khair. Kabira stands in the marketplace wishing the welfare of all. Sabuti care, mange, he genuinely wishes and prays the welfare of all beings, of everyone. Na kahu se dositi, na kahu se bair, neither any friendship nor enmity with anyone. So he is in the marketplace, wishing the welfare of all, He is not intending to get into any friendship with anybody, nor an enmity with anybody. So you, you may, if you want to see the applicability of this, every, every Doha, every verse, there is a, a beautiful applied philosophy. And that's the angle we are taking the journey into. It's not trying to get into the, the purest form of philosophy, but you will be able to enjoy the applicability of it. Now you and I are in the marketplace day in and day out. What is the, the difference? The two quintessential points is making. When we are in the marketplace, 
Are we wishing the welfare of everybody out there? What is our attitude we're bringing to when we are at work? Wherever we are, are we genuinely wishing the welfare of all? So the first thing that strikes a chord is the trademark, he says, the trademark of all great men, that which stands out, that makes them different from the rest. There's a Sanskrit word, all the time, all they did was for loka sangraha. Loka sangraha means everything that they have done is they did for the welfare of all beings, for the welfare of others. They never thought in their own self-interest. So the only way we can evolve and rise to the level of these great men is to change your attitude, change the purpose. It's not where you are in the marketplace. Where you are in the marketplace depends on what is your nature. Are you a businessman? Are you a sportsman? Are you a musician? Are you a philosopher? Whatever be your nature, whatever be your personality, whatever be your requirements, you are there for that purpose. But having found yourself in the marketplace, you've got to think in the larger interest this is the quality of a spiritual person, wishing the welfare of one and all. So to every juncture, we have got this decision to make. What is the decision to make? Am I to sacrifice myself for a larger cause or am I to sacrifice a larger cause for my own self-interest? That is this quintessential decision, a dilemma you got to make all the time. Am I to uphold myself for a cause or am I to uphold the cause at my cost? And one who sacrifices himself, who lets go of his interest for a larger cause stands out. That's the quality the verse starts off. Standing in the marketplace, wishing the welfare of all. Now what more you read Standing in the marketplace means here is someone who is din, in the din and roar of the, of the marketplace, which means here is a man who is engaged in action. The Shastras are not against leading a life of being in action. They are not against an inactive life. So a spiritual person should be in the marketplace. There's no necessity for you to withdraw from action. So you got to get into the spirit. You got to get into the field of activity. And what you bring along with that is an attitude where you constantly think in the benevolence of others. Whatever you do, even what you choose not to do. Is like saying, uh, if I don't do this, what is the consequence of that in terms of the impact to the society constantly? If you are a leader of an organization, everything you do and not do impacts the organization in that interest, in that sense. Okay. And the second beautiful thing he says is he's neither any friendship nor any enmity with anybody. He has got nothing to do with all that's happening out there. Now, how do you understand this? Neither any friendship nor any enmity. Yes, Reddy Garu. Pranam Guruji. Namaskar, sir. Uh, my understanding goes on the neither friendship nor enmity. is something like not to be attached and not to be get detached. So be neutral, be objective. 
is it something because the friendship How? brings you more towards the you you get friendship friendship and you try to be more close to them and you feel compassion you feel love to them and enmity is a one way hatred and all jealousy and every aspects will come into the mind mm -hmm. so neither, neither you both of them should be brought into your thoughts and minds so be neutral be away from both of that yes not to be carried away by all the good that happens in your life and all the bad you means you will find there are people who are acceptful you will find there are people who do not accept you there are friendship there is hatred yes you remain neutral yeah. so the question is how do you get to that state of being neutral where you don't get carried away by the emotions that come along with being good or being bad isn't it yes guru ji that, that is every moment challenge it is an every moment challenge right it's it's not it's not only uh, um people it is in every experience isn't it so uh before i uh, i can clarify further taking the point further what i would want to ask is the moment he says um friendship not enmity what is he trying to indicate what's the philosophical concept here we are trying to understand see the, each philosopher each guru had his own way of bringing out the truth that's the unique flavor the unique offerings but the principles which we have learned remain the same hmm? so when we say neither friendship nor enmity what concept are we talking about here if i can ask shrini ji and then i'll come to gb kera garu let me get this question clarified i think he is um, trying to get across that there is um, no relationships that should be made and that uh, it's not a transactional equation that's what he's trying to get across i think so as i have said shiniji it's not being specific to relationship as such but when we when he talks about a friend and a foe what is he trying to convey here what's the message here i'm not clear then i still see it as a relationship or it 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 is certainly applicable to a relationship but the broader sense of the philosophy that comes into the forefront here see when we talk about okay let let's hear let's hear from uh uh gb kera gar maybe he can clarify this and clarify what what he wanted to say let's let's hear from others before i i comment yes sir jai gurudev namaskar sir namaskar sir is like the sakshi bhut sakshi bhut means like a mirror like a movie screen so it doesn't get any uh, it, it won't carry it don't carry it. whatever the uh, presence of mind just go on and the sacrifice you know the nature the human beings we have the mind we have the mind the mind is the one which is going to cause the problem uh, to sakshi both if you are get attached as an enemy uh, feel that feeling should not come into the mind as is a friend or enemy that stage to get the sakshi both is the ultimate to reach that stage all this uh, wisdom discourses or anything is uh, as a guru you are teaching us to reach that stage is not uh, difficult but it is uh, is, uh, is not asadhya but is uh, uh, possible with the practice the practice right. practice practice uh, correct absolutely so that quality of trying to be 
sakshi sakshi is you took the example of a screen or a mirror you know which is a mere witness it doesn't get carried Sorry. away or get involved with all the good or the bad that's happening the mind is to be such a stage then only you are be, uh, that that is the stage where uh, ultimate <laughs> either gold or uh, soil looking at the same it is not that right. easy <laughs> <laughs> not that easy yes <laughs> so yes very much sir. thank you ji thank you right so uh, the so you are getting a cue you know what is it that we are trying to what is those two terms trying to convey yes yeah, sethuji priyam guru ji priyam sir uh, not getting uh, judgmental and not getting attached mm -hmm. so, see as no pre although as if we seeing for the first time even a friend or a foe not having any preconceived notions about the personality or and also at the same time uh, not getting attached all right okay right in fact the the larger or the deeper meaning what he talks neither any friendship nor any enmity what he is talking about are the pairs of opposites of the world that we experience when we go through any experience the world is defined as dwandvas which means opposites so when you talk of opposites at the material level you got profit and loss when you talk of opposites at the physical level you got health ill health birth death when you talk of opposites at the emotional level you got love hatred when you talk in terms of opposite in terms of beings you get acceptance non acceptance intellectually so everything in our life every experience in our life and life is nothing but an experience isn't it you are morning to night you are going through various experiences and every experience you either meet the good or the bad there's nothing beyond that you will either come across a friend or you come across a foe you will either come across a win you will all come across a loss any sport means there is somebody going to win somebody going to lose mm -hmm. why do you get carried away with the emotions of a match a sport somebody has to win somebody has to lose mm -hmm. when you win you find everybody puts you at a pedestal when you're lost the same fellows who put you up will pull you down so don't go through don't be swayed through the ups and downs of life so even though you are wishing the welfare of everyone even though you are in the marketplace even though you are conducting yourself as your nature demands you to do how do you conduct yourself you are performing your actions without getting affected either by the pairs of opposites so now you are not influenced by good nor are you influenced by bad and how to get to that state one is the state other is how do you get to that state how do you practice this quality and this is where we are talking of the applied philosophy so when you come across experiences you will come across these opposites now how do you practice this quality 
not to be swayed by profit, not to be swayed by loss, not to be affected by the good, nor be affected by the bad. How do you practice it? As GPKG said, it is to be a sakshi. Now, how to be a sakshi? Let me engage those who are coming for the first time. And those seasoned people will refrain from answering. So no permissions given to the seasoned people. Until you are being told to clarify. Okay. Now let me ask Mayama, are you there? I'm here, but... <laughs> are you following? I'm following. Right. So why did you mute yourself? Are you in a position to comment? It'll be good if we can, we can see yes. you. Okay, fair enough, right, no problem. So uh, let me ask uh, Dhanyama. What a beautiful name. Hello. Namaskar. Namaskar. Are you following the, the conversation? A uh, little bit. Something, some parts are going over me. Which part has gone over you? Is uh -huh. it your first, first satsang? Yeah. My mother is a regular attendee, Padmini. Ah, I could sense that in your, in the, in, in your voice only I could sense. And yeah. then I saw the I, I, uh, I saw the reflection uh, of your voice from your mother. Yes. Okay. So she must be lecturing to you or constantly. You this must not be your first lecture then. <laughs> you don't allow her to lecture so much to me, but uh... oh, you don't allow. You yeah. must tell. You must give that that uh, talent to us also because all the time she's lecturing to me. Lecture. <laughs> So how, to, how to avoid that, uh, you have to tell me, you know? Okay. She does. <laughs> yes. Right, right. Yo, no, the, good, good to have you. So, no, the, which is it that perhaps you couldn't relate to in the what was said so far? Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know. You were talking about some Sakshi uh, mirror and all of that. So that I couldn't. But yeah, treating success and failure, it is easy to say, right? Uh, treat them as the same. I don't know. And I remember learning in some poem, I think it was Rudyard Kipling or something like there are two imposters, consider both of them as imposters, etc. So yeah. uh, we'll try. Yeah. No, uh, it is indeed, as you rightly said, it is indeed not easy to, to, to live by these ideas. But the very fact that we are examining these truths is so that one is you are creating a, a direction for your thoughts. Secondly, the fact that you give a line of thought, it helps you imbibe the values. As the simple principle is what you keep thinking of, invariably you, you become it. That's in fact, in philosophy, what we call as a law of attachment. You know? you don't get too overwhelmed with these certain technical terms, but what you will be happy to note and take away is the principles. And you will slowly, if you are on the journey and if you come to this text and start embracing these values, these concepts will come become very familiar to you. So the, it gives you a line of thought and it also reinforces the idea that you are embracing. That's the benefit. 
Now, the term Sakshi, which was used earlier, now Sakshi is to be a witness, is when you stand apart and you look at the world, you look, the world presents these two opposites, which is there is profit, there is loss, there is birth, there is death, there is acceptance, there is rejectance, there is heat, there is cold, there is love, there is hatred, there is friend, there is a foe. This is what the world is, isn't it? So when you meet the world, you are invariably going to receive either of the two. And the natural effect of not being able to maintain a witness is to get involved with it and be carried away with it. As you would see in a procession, a procession of a marriage, everybody is jumping with joy and ecstasy. And half an hour later, another procession of a funeral passes by. Everybody is sad and morose. The same stretch, there was a marriage procession. And half an hour later, there was a funeral procession. Now, but you are watching from a balcony. From the balcony, you watch the marriage procession. You have got nothing to do with all the joy and ecstasy. A little later, there was a funeral procession. You have got nothing to do with all the sorrow and misery. So you're watching it from the balcony. So what this verse, this Doha is saying is, you must detach yourself from the happenings. So you watch the entire happening from the balcony of your truth, which is from your inward self. Don't get swayed by the outer happenings. So to the extent you can relate, first and foremost, you've got to relate. Being spiritual doesn't mean you... You, you pack your bags and you say, I've got nothing to do with it. No, no, no. You've got to be in the marketplace. Do what your duties. As a mother, you have your duties. You could be a manager. You could be, you are a wife. You are a, a member of a society. So whatever roles you got to be demanded by, you got to play. But no point being there and getting completely carried away with it, isn't it? In fact, there's a beautiful example given. If you can go and Lecture this back to your mother, huh? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, uh, you know what I learned today? A Sakshi Bhav is like being a butter paper, not like a blotting paper. You should go and tell that to her. What's a butter paper? A butter paper doesn't absorb anything, isn't it? A blotting paper absorbs everything. So Sakshi Bhav is to be like a butter paper. Where you don't absorb anything, yet you experience it. You know the joy, you can feel the joy, and yet you're not affected by the joy. There are two different things, Danya. One is to feel the joy, yet another thing is not to be affected by the joy. So what the text is saying is you must be able to feel the various experiences of life, but yet you must not be affected by it. So what is the inquiry is you, you experience what life has to throw at you. Life has to, when you experience life, when you have traversed the length of life, you would know that there is all these opposites, isn't it? This is life. But the question is, am I affected by it? That really is a mark of a spiritual person. It's not the experience. Question is, the affectation of it is the is a trademark. So when he says he has got nothing to do with friendship or enmity, means he is, he is maintaining, as Redigaru earlier said, he maintain, maintains a neutral stance. It's like when you're a manual car, the gear when it's in neutral, any amount of acceleration, it, it, there's no effect on it. So whatever happens around you should not dampen you, nor should it excite you. Now, that doesn't mean your life becomes very morose. No, no, no. You are so mature, you're so balanced in your life that you remain unaffected by the world. That's what is the term Sakshi means. Sakshi is to remain unaffected by the happenings around you, yet you participate in them. Yet you are able to engage and do your duties. In fact, you'll be able to do your duties when you remain unaffected, isn't it? So now, the uh, is that okay? You follow? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, I did. You're, you're yes. following, all right? Okay. Yes. Feel free to 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 please feel free to clarify. No point being here and 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 being lost because you're not familiar. Because I take the liberty uh, of or people take the liberty of using certain terms because we are all familiar with it. But if someone you don't follow, please raise your hand and and we'll be more than happy to clarify. Okay, ma. Yeah, sure. Oh, good. Thank you. So Thanks. the question, the question of what we all need to wonder is how to apply this quality of not getting swayed either by the positive or by the negative. That how to apply that principle. Hmm. Uh, maybe if I can come back again to uh, Sriniji. How to apply that? I think one way to think about that is to say uh, the concept of positive and negative would arise with the fact that you are looking at an outcome. So you're really looking for what an outcome is, that an outcome would be a positive or a negative. So if you say, I'm not even <clears throat> um, bothered about an outcome, then the starting point may not even comments. So then it becomes neutral, is the way I could probably see it. So you say you are not interested in, in the, the fruits Correct. of your labor. You're not really, the focus is not in the outcome of your action. The focus thereafter, therefore is in the Is in the action of the present or whatever that moment is. The, the, I mean, performer, you, the performance. You used an analogy right at the beginning of a match. So let's say you're witnessing a match and you're in the moment and you're not even bothered whether you win or lose. Right? That, that very, I see as an very, outcome. Very rarely people practice what you said now. I totally agree. I was very disappointed last night. <laughs> But you know but that means you did not practice what you said just now. I, what did you say just now? What did you say just now? What's the word I've I've got hold of it in your statement? Sir, you said it. I didn't say that. I didn't. I, I hope I did not communicate that I am practicing it. I'm trying to interpret the doha. You not in you have clearly clean bold yourself here. So there's no second second thought or discussion about it. You said, witness the match. When you witness the match, you will not be disappointed, sir. Because you are just witnessing and enjoying the beauty of the game. Isn't it? When I witness a match, I am neutral. I am not favorable to one and I'm wanting this to win and that to lose. That is already an emotion very much. You know, um, Somebody showed me a picture of their television. It must have got circulated. You know, nothing else to do. Whatever some come, keep forwarding. That's all people do. So there, uh, uh, I came across a picture just before the match, you know, of somebody had put their television with covered with grill. They've constructed a grill around the television so that based on the consequence and experience, I don't know how many televisions I must have been broken. You know? So that fellow, very smartly, I would say very wise fellow, he constructed a, a cage and he's put the, the television in the cage. You know, you are allowing yourself to be swayed by it. But if you are a mere witness, you witness the match, yes. I've got nothing to do with the outcome. So the, the quality that we are looking at, which would come to the forefront to apply this quality. Ramji? You have a point, Sriniji. I take that point, yes. Namaste, Guruji. Namaskar. So I think this is a very... Um, good concept which I have tried to follow quite a lot in my life, but uh, with varying degrees of success at different points of time. Um, I think um, 
especially at, at work, you know, because in personal life, you can do things much more easily than at work. Because at work, you have to, you have to get certain things done. So in that process, you tend to become uh, a little more, um, let's say, emotionally attached or emotionally involved with the processes that are being followed. And uh, so <clears throat> I think it is very, 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 very difficult. I mean, for example, the match example you gave, if India is playing Pakistan, how can anyone remain unattached emotionally to that match? Right. Now you, you are, of course, you are an exception, Guruji. So no, I'm no, not no. talking of you. But uh, No, no, no. You know, yesterday, hmm. I when asked Vijaya's testimony to it, I went to sleep at 9.15. That is I very good. Then you didn't see the result. <laughs> In fact, I was telling my dad, I was watching my, the match first half with my dad and I told him that India would lose with seven wickets. But I was disappointed terribly that they lost. I was proven ten wrong. Wickets. Ten wickets. I know. So but what I'm saying is that, yeah, yes. what I'm saying is that so, when India plays, uh, not only Pakistan, anybody, you tend to get more involved. If England is playing Australia, you have no emotional attachment to that. You're watching a match like a Sakshi, right? There you will appreciate the game better than when India is playing a match. When, when uh, let's say, if Rohit Sharma gets out to the first ball, how his father will feel? You and I may not feel so much, but that comes out of attachment, that comes out of uh, emotional attachment to the things that you consider as your own. Uh, I agree that you should not have attachment, but it is not, it is, as I said, very to the square of very, is, uh, that is the level of difficulty in that. But sir, what's the fun when you don't have that emotion? Exactly. So that you, is the point. Must, yeah. you must feel the emotion, yet not be swayed by the emotion. They are two different things. Not to have a feeling at all is to be like a piece of wood or stone. It's like to bring someone who doesn't follow cricket and put him in the, in a cricket ground. You know, what's the, all this excitement? Why are these 11 fellows running behind one ball, you would say, you know? What is the thing? Give them each a ball and let them be happy with it, you know? So what is this that's going on? You don't understand the game. So it is important. There's no point. I, I can't say that I am Sakshi to your life. You can't say you are Sakshi to my life. You don't care about my life. Not literally, sir. When I don't, mm -hmm. I don't care your existence, when I don't care an existence of a person, how can I say be objective to it? The real test of objectivity is in areas you have a feeling or an emotion. That is the acid test. Exactly. So at the end of the match yesterday, I could think that Pakistan played better and they won. Being That's an it. Indian, if I could think that way, then I think I am practicing what we are talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You appreciate the game. You appreciate the talent. You appreciate the performance. You have that feeling, but yet you say, yes, I, I, I am neutral. I, 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 yeah. So exactly the same way, when you say something, it's not necessarily you must be accepted by something. It's not necessarily, uh, it's also possible that you will be non-accepted by certain people. Not necessarily everybody must love and adore you and fall at your feet. So it's possible people will hate you. So when that comes across you, you must understand the. So how, what is it that brings in the forefront? What's the quality you need to bring it to the forefront? Uh, I think uh, what what is already mentioned as uh, the detachment uh, or a lack of attach or non-attachment to the result, like Sirenji mentioned. If you are uh, if you are indifferent, I won't say indifferent. If you are neutral to the result that comes out of that action, then you can be more detached and you can be more like a sakshi. Yes. 
But I also you... found, uh, Guruji, that uh, at least at work, and which uh, I have also practiced quite a lot, is one of the ways I try to do this is to see positive things in people and in situations. Right. Mm -hmm. So that also gives you a lot of strength to actually remain a bit neutral with between um, two people. Because even if somebody is uh, not performing or somebody, some situation is very adverse situation, if you're able to see positivity in that or the positive uh, things in a person, I think it helps you to be more neutral than if you get swayed by uh, you know, emotions related to each person. That certainly helps. That indeed helps, in fact. Very true. And, and even whether you, you have got a candid solution, but what this study does is it gives you a certain, a certain line of thought, as I've mentioned. It gives you an opportunity to, to, to ponder and, and examine how you approach it. That's the important part. It's not to have a solution, but to constantly strive to, to, to get to that. That helps you, you know. That really helps you, you know. Thanks, Ramji. Yes. Uh, Venkat Ramji. Hi. Good morning. Sorry, it took time to unmute. Uh, you know, the when you do vipassana, I think they use a very nice term, which is equanimity. I think uh, basically what he's trying to bring out in this first uh, Doha or whatever, is to be equanimous, which means not get emotionally affected with the interaction with in anything, whether with a friend or with an outcome or with a, with a situation in life. And to stay emotionally detached is what I think is trying to bring out in this uh, poem. Yes, that, that state of being equanimous. But what we are trying to, uh, equanimity is a state, but how do you achieve that state is, is the point. So how do you get to that point? So what is that you need to do to get to that point is the analysis. But your, your observation is right, sir, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Harish. Haryom Guruji. Haryom Harish. Uh, Guruji, what about uh, if one was to say that we should not have any expectations with anyone or the marketplace, would that be fair to say that's a correct analysis, to have no expectations? It is rather difficult to say I have no expectation at all. It is right to say that you must have a reasonable expectation. Okay. Because then you are being realistic in your approach to life, isn't it? You know the people, you know the environment, you know what you're going to interact, you know what you're going to marriage, you're, you're having a, a marriage with, uh, with your work, you're, you're married to your your country means you're living there. You know what to expect from your country. You know what to expect from your employees. You know what to expect from the government. You know what to expect from the society. So there is a, a reasonable expectation. You know? Okay. So what we are saying is when, and that, that brings to the forefront, I think Ritigaru uh, also has commented that what brings to the forefront is to operate on your buddhi, the intellect. When you bring in the intellect, so the quality of being a sakshi or a witness is directly proportional to the strength of your buddhi. If you are 20% a witness, that means you have an intellectual strength of 20%. To that extent, you are witnessed. Otherwise, beyond that 80%, you invariably get involved. So it is the strength of the intellect that maintains an inward distance to everything that's presented to it. And it's the intellect that 
prepares you well in advance. It's like you get a weather forecast, isn't it? There's going to be a, um, a hailstorm or there's going to be a hurricane or there's going to be a, a heavy downpour. You prepare in advance. So this intellectual assessment will help you to mentally prepare what to expect. And when things do come, even beyond your assessment, you maintain an inward abstraction. It means it's the intellect that remains detached and the intellect that has a control over the mind. So we're talk talking two things here. One is to remain mentally distanced from what's happening because you're withdrawn within. Second thing is your intellect has kept the emotions in control. So that these two aspects, when they come in, to that extent, you can manage what the world throws at you. Somebody, in fact, Setuji has rightly commented earlier, when you deal with the world, another way of looking at it is when you interact with the world based on your likes and dislikes, then you will find the world presents itself as the opposites are very much evident. Is that what you are intending to say, Setuji? When you interact the world based on your likes and dislikes, the world's opposites become more evident. Yes, Setuji. Yes. Then, are you on the same thing, what you said here? So how do you how do you explain it? We we should uh, enjoy the action, but uh, at the same time, not uh, swayed by it. Yes. So <clears throat> the action should not be performed based on your ragadvesha. You must not act on your likes and dislikes. So if you act on likes and dislikes, then you are you're automatically favoring certain things and non-favoring certain things. Isn't it? And the world out there is not going to satisfy your likes and dislikes. And that's where you're already subjecting yourself to either good or bad. So how do you operate? How do you perform the action, not based on likes and dislikes, but operate based on the intellect. When you operate on intellect, that, that takes you to the neutral stance. Then you are able to assess the world, as I was telling Harish, and then you are inwardly, there's an inward abstraction to receive whatever that's thrown at you, you gracefully accept. And that also gives you the capacity to keep the mind under control, emotions under control. I think, Situ, you have got a very valid point, but don't Contact the world based on your likes and dislikes, which is the mind. In other words, we have to strengthen the intellect. There is nothing else but... Intellect, the... Although we, we know this, we cannot practice. Correct. If you don't have an intellect, you may know it, but yet you may not be able to practice it. Very true. Very true. Thank you, Ji. Yes, Srini Ji? So I was rereading the Doha. Is there a clue given? And I just might, it's a, it's a humble question here that the word chosen by Kabir is that he is standing in a bazaar. Kabir khada hua bazaar mein. So the concept of being in a bazaar means that I am looking at, I really don't know people. I'm just standing in a new environment where it's a marketplace and which points to you towards saying, hey, use your intellect. It, there is no attachment to anybody or there's no likes or dislikes. Is that how, why he has used the word bazaar versus, let's say, at your home or in a congregation where you know people? Hmm. <clears throat> so are we trying to edit something here? No, I'm saying, is he giving you a clue on how to control the mind? That's what. Think about the situation. 
that you uh-huh. are in a bazaar, therefore think about it as an intellect versus that's what I'm trying to. Is that is that the reason I why w- I would. For your own safety, I'm saying use the intellect little more in the house and less outside. You are safer. You will be very safe if you do use intellect little more in the house. Very I'm difficult. Sure they, no, I know it's very difficult, but I'm sure you, umpty number of times you've gone in trouble at home. I'm sure. I'm sure you've gone in trouble, isn't it? You are safer it's outside. The alternative sir. that very few times I've been in the positive. Uh, very true. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I, I, you can scrutinize it. You know, we can uh, handle it, but you know, it's the it's the broad principle that we take away. So, the takeaway I would think from the verse is, you must wherever you are, whether whether you're in the marketplace, whether, whether wherever you are, you must wish the welfare. Bring in the attitude of loka sangra. There is a pure, genuine, unselfish intent in wishing the welfare of everyone. Secondly, while you are conducting yourself, don't allow yourself to be affected by what the world throws at you. One is your attitude to the world. What is what the world's attitude towards you? So these are the two things. So you be mindful. What is your attitude to the world? Even when the world throws negativity, does your wishing the welfare of the world change? No, your attitude to wish the welfare of the world remains. Whether the world accepts you or rejects you. So one, what the world throws at you, what it vis-a-vis, what you give back to the world. I think it can, if we can sum up with this two standpoints, I think we have done justice as the take the takeaway from the verse. And I'm sure there's a lot more, and I know there's something more to come when Hariji is doing Namaskar. That means he has something to say. Sriniji, there are a few new things I'm telling you about your brother. Please take a note. Okay. Yes, Hariji. Hari Om Guruji. And he will say, I have nothing to say. That's how usually he will start. Everything has been so so very well said, he will say. Hari Om Guruji, am I audible? Very audible, sir. So, when were you not, sir? When were you not, sir? I think you took the words out of my mouth, Guruji, but I was just uh, thinking that um, the whole, it's it's very esoteric or very, it's very easy to say, but very difficult to actually practice and conceive what is this intellect, what is this mind, all that kind of thing. The way I look at it is a very simple layman that you do all your thinking before you act. And once you start acting, you stop thinking. You just focus on the work per se. And I've found that in my own life, particularly when you go through ups and downs and when there are reversals, the way to to actually go ahead is to shut off the mind once you get into action. You call it focus, you can call it anything. But the, the trick is, uh, is to continue to act without the mind. So it's almost mindless. And that is when you can shut off things like the fruits of action. You can, you can not, you don't think about all those things. So as you have always said, the detachment is not physical, it is in the mind. And so what you really do is to switch off the mind once you start acting. So use all the intellect before you act. Use the mind. No, very well said, Ji. But you don't mind me uh, saying in a lighter note. I have seen that many times with you, Harishi. All the planning happens before, but once you get into action, the intellect is switched off. But I have seen it. Rajima, correct, Dhaneh? Thereafter, there is no intellect. There is only into the action, full full flow in the action. I know she understands it. I know you understand it. Let others keep guessing, Harishi. <laughs> All right. So, uh, at least I've given you a line of thought. 
what what's to expect from a, a seemingly innocuous thing in fact another point which we learn in the shastras is you have the spiritual path or the progression is the path is nothing to do with the good or the bad shrimiji this is something far more profound which is perhaps is being conveyed spiritual path has got nothing to do with the good or the bad it's nothing to do with the punya or apunya the path to the truth is punya apunya vivarjita pantha we learned in the in the bhagavad gita you know you have got nothing to do with the good or the bad but you take to the the selfless route it's not selfish it's not unselfish but the selfless path which is what he says i have got nothing to do with the good nothing to do with the bad all i'm interested is to get to the truth which is the path beyond the good and the bad that's perhaps a little extension to the concept you can draw further out of that as well okay now let's let's get into the next doha if i can uh, just connect with one or two of those who are here for the first time just to make sure they are following um i see um hope i'm pronouncing you correctly uh is it kashish kashish uh yes hi hi namaskar namaskar guruji Namaskar. May I know? Is that is that your name, ma? Yeah, you... Kashish. It's pro- Kashish. yeah. You, you pronounced it fine. Yeah. Pronounced it correctly. Okay. Where are you from? Um, I'm in Sydney at the moment. Oh, Australia. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Nice to have you. Have you been uh, following the line of thought? Have you been following the discussion? Yes, I have. Um, I've. been finding it very interesting so far because i've had conversations like this with my dad about like detachment and walking the middle path and and that that style of of facing adversity so i've been finding the discussion very engaging i'm glad i'm glad anything that you haven't haven't followed hasn't hasn't accorded with you you're good uh no i think i i i think i've understood most of it i'm just interested right. to yeah I'm, I'm very happy to note that the first time you're here and you understood everything. We are struggling <laughs> to still still make sense of many things here. So I envy you. You know, so good good to have you. And uh, feel free uh, if you want to comment or clarify. All right. So Will thank do. you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Yes, most welcome. Yeah. Um, Subramanyam ji. namaskar namaskar sir hari om uh, able to follow but uh, i'm finding it it will be very difficult to not very difficult it difficult to implement in the real life maybe it takes more time more thinking as you said more intellect is required to understand the things and move forward and be neutral yes absolutely in fact uh, this is a very familiar uh, question that keeps coming i understand it i know what it is but then there is a little uh, difficulty in implementing everything that i clearly understand isn't it you know mm-hmm. so there is there is uh, in in to just put it in in the terms which uh, the shastras put it we have the the knowledge but we lack the wisdom wisdom is to live knowledge is to be informed so once you have a certain know how or a knowledge why is it that we all find it difficult to live it not that you don't understand not that you do not uh, uh, give credibility to the, the to the teachings to the principles you understand it and you know it works you know it's applicable yet why is there a difference it if if it can be very single pointedly narrowed down and if all of you can can take a stand up and take a serious note why is there a gap between knowledge and wisdom 
is because we have we do not do what is known as manana what we do not do is a conscious reflection on these ideas when these ideas that come our way through platforms like these or a dialogue that you get into or you read a book or a literature you are acquainted with these ideas that is nothing but information that comes to your way maybe you have processed it little bit here and there you have questioned it but it still remains as a raw information yes but when that knowledge is left as information it you are only informed but not transformed sure, sure but for the information to end up as transformation and the transformation is the term we call as wisdom when you have wisdom you live it what should one do to go from a state of information to transformation there is that bridge and what is that exercise we all got to do is manana in sanskrit which is conscious reflection now reflection is nothing but as cattle do what do cattle do after they graze nine subramaniam ji what what do what do, what do cattle do nine cattle cattle they will be doing they they they, they chew the cud they cuddle isn't it so yeah. they bring the food back into the mouth and they they chew the cud they just cut chew it exactly the same process each one of us the shastras recommend us to revisit these ideas and start questioning yeah. start bringing it down to digestible pieces start finding the pros and cons start examining these ideas on your own and that is when you are actually lecturing to yourself you are giving a positive reinforcement of these ideas and that when it is done the knowledge starts translating itself into wisdom and people around you start noticing a change you may not notice a change others around you will say hey i see a distinct change in your attitude or your conduct or you're able to handle things much better i saw you used to get very emotional now you're much balanced others will start noticing a change so when you don't do reflection there is bound to be a bridge between knowing and living and classes like this and the and the platform that we have provided is to have a dialogue it's not again lecturing so it's it's is this interaction process that again helps you think yes helps you unfold the hidden message and sets the process of thinking for you so that you could carry the process at your own time so that you come back again with questions and have a dialogue so this is the process that really helps you to bridge the gap between knowing and living true true right yes. so um, i i was only giving a rationale but i i really understand where you are coming from subramaniam ji you know appreciate thank you thank right, you sir. yeah from hyderabad love to have you sir good to have you okay thank you thank you namaskar namaskar so it's just almost time up but um, let let's chant the second doha and we'll read the translation and then perhaps it gives you a line of thought to think and ponder when we come back we will get into the the second doha please ma bura jo dekhan me chala बुरा न मिले आको जो मुख देखा अपना मुझसे बुरा न कोई कबीरा मुझसे बुरा न को बुरा जो देखन मैं चला बुरा न मिले आको 
जो मुख देखा आपना मुझसे बुरा न कोई कबीरा मुझसे बुरा न को माई गाइड सच ब्यूटिफुल सच अ ब्यूटिफुल दोहा नाउ द वर्स टॉक्स द टाइटल इज सर्चिंग फॉर ईवल बुरा जो देखन मैं चला आई वेंट ऑन अ सर्च टू फाइंड अ क्रिकेट गाय अ बैड गाय बुरा न मिले कोई आई कुड मीट अ सिंगल वन आउट देर who went not you and i ha kabira went <laughs> you and i would go i don't know about you i would go i would find plenty of bad men this fellow is a crook this fellow is arch crook this fellow is a phd in crookery i might give titles to this fellows but bura jo dekhan main chala bura na mile ya koi jo mukh dekha apna mujhse bura na koi upon searching my mind none was as crooked as me when i found so much to correct within me that i found everybody out there far better than me so please write down what is this verse conveying first and foremost do you believe there's any truth in this verse thanks kaitri ma i want to see raise of hands how many of you believe that there is any truth in it huh? some of them are choosing not to raise hand especially vijayaraghav ji is not even raising his hand ha huh? and sir unless your hand is hidden don't say i am raising but is hidden huh? thank you <laughs> so if that is truth in it yes sir vijay raghavan ji namaskar guru ji it was not getting namaskar. unmuted i mean oh looks like okay. uh, nobody wants to listen to me no 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 i want to listen to you sir forget nobody i want to listen to you so i was thinking about the practical part of the uh, how do we use the intellect we were talking mm-hmm. about the previous one yeah. that perhaps the best way to start is to introspect into our own reactions to how we have reacted you know how we have reacted to various things start thinking looking at it analyzing it could i have done better uh, and perhaps slowly if we do it more often uh, and if we start looking at things with any without any bias or preconceived notions over a period of time we'll our things will be more attenuated i mean instead of uh, having a strong feeling or uh, uh, attitude or uh, uh, just think uh, towards whatever has happened uh, no in fact uh, the fact that you bring it up again is just a point that it needs a reiteration isn't it uh, so it it just boils down to the a self awareness a self awareness which you come through a self introspection of your own actions your own responses and how you have reacted to situations even if you were to do an objective post mortem of your own experiences or something which has just recently transpired to just to know where you stand in that equation i think if if you are able to point that finger at yourself and examine yourself i think there's a solution and if you were to look outward and try to believe there's something wrong out there may god be with you so i think that exercise is that which helps the, the process and raise the bar so using yes, the word you. intellect is one thing and then trying to make it useful to ourselves becomes a little more difficult you know so objectivity is traveling towards objectivity uh, is perhaps a little journey towards intellect using intellect absolutely you can only be objective to the extent you have the intellect if you don't have that then you can't be objective very right very very right ji 
Yeah, but these are terms we are familiar and we we are we will use it liberally. We have been using it, but uh, uh, it's to to get the most of what these concepts are. All right, sir. So, so there's Can a lot of truth. your question, Guruji. That's what I I I I, <laughs> I, I assume it. that you agree. I assume <laughs> that you agree. <laughs> so there is a. Uh, I'm sure there is a, a lot of. Uh, Truth in what Sant Kabir says in Second Doha, yeah? searching for evil. You know, so I went on search for a crooked guy, couldn't find a single person. So what is the Doha conveying? Just get your thoughts, gather your thoughts. We come back, we will enlighten ourselves into this beautiful. Doha and the, the text, okay? Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Nath Pur Namudachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Om